What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with the review for Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 7, Episode 5. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so the show opens with Tommy and Tierra's conversation. For the life of me, I don't understand why this conversation is taking place. The only thing that I can figure is that they are trying to somehow introduce show enough scrap back into the storyline without having to deal with Karen King. Okay, so Mona and her writers probably decided to get together and uh, bring old Tierra back. Fuck, she ain't doing shit else. Tierra says that, uh, you know, she feels that even though they've been fighting in the past, that women, you know, should support each other, that they should come together. That's what showing up Scrap would want as well. He wants all of his family to be together, even though Tommy is not part of the family. I guess he's all broke up over the fact that Karen King and Tommy aren't friends. He even wants them to make up. Tommy says, absolutely not. You guys remember the epic dragging that Karen King did of Tommy. Tommy cannot let that go, at least not for now. And child, all the tea that she spilled on Tommy, I think it would take me a little while to get over that as well. Anyways, why are we sitting and having this conversation? Well, sure enough, Scrap is about to get out of jail. And um, Tierra pretty much wants to know if Tommy is out of the picture, okay? I guess sure enough, Scrap been filling her head with the uh, prison promises. You know how they do. He gonna get with her when he get out. She just wants to make sure that Tommy's not a threat. Tommy says, I didn't even know he was getting out. Tommy hasn't really kept in touch with him. I guess even with this shit happening with Karen, probably pushed her further away. And so Tommy was just like, I don't really think anything is gonna happen with us. But the way Tommy was also kind of talking, I'm not sure if Tommy was sure if she was done with showing enough scrap. So later on, she meets with her real friends. That would be Young Jock and Tammy Rivera. I was like, oh, little Tammy didn't got put off the show. Now she's just a friend of the show. Anyway, they meet at a bar, of course. Tommy's always got to have a drink involved. She starts telling them about her family issues, okay? How her mama had to got this damn shoot together. And she and Versace still ain't made up over the fact that Versace is making Tommy have to go to court seven more damn times. On top of all her other problems that she got with the law. Okay, that Versace didn't made her life so miserable. And you guys know why, because they scared the good white people when uh, Tommy showed up at her job and <laughs> was cutting the food and Versace had to call the fucking police on her. I guess they didn't know that it was going to go that far. But you guys see how Tommy gets when she's about to start fighting? Shit gets out of control. There's nothing else you can do but arrest her ass. Hey, Tommy, you probably did it to yourself, baby girl, but that's neither here nor there. She also tells him about Tierra. Um, how that unlikely conversation came about, you know, they was just like, what? She was like, yeah, girl, all of a sudden, she worried about if I'm going to be getting back together with show enough scrap. She does admit that she's not really on that page anymore, but she's, again, I'm not really sure. Something tells me that they're going to try to mix these stories these storylines some kind of witch away. Y'all know how that Mona bitch do. So then later on, she's at home. She's minding her business. A couple of her brothers just barge in. It's so funny when the doors open on the alarm charm on her um, house. It sounds just like my house, child. I jumped up like somebody was coming in my own house. <laughs> Nigga was like, what? Nigga, I know not today. At 8.30 in the evening, y'all trying to come in this house. Motherfuckers get shot if they want to. Anyway, Tommy is talking to her brothers about Versace and, you know, over the fact that her mom was tripping, that her mom should not have had everybody at the photo shoot and thought that Tommy and Versace was just going to get along and make up. And the brothers was like, yeah, you know, mom probably could have handled that a little differently. And now she won't come around until her mom and Versace apologize because she felt ambushed. And she feels that she is right in this whole situation. I'm thinking to myself, like, even if Versace hadn't called the police, if you had a place of business and the good white people are watching you and scared to death, somebody was going to call the fucking police anyway. It was inevitable that you was going to go to jail that day. So you being so upset with Versace is a moot point. The brothers, because her family is so fucked up, and I'm sure they know their mom and the shit that she puts everybody through and how, you know, they're on one day and off the next day. You know, they, they just was like, yeah, they, they understand where Tommy was coming from. Plus, Tommy is their link to the money, okay? Can't get the, can't piss off the one that's paying the damn bills around there. So, yes, it's best you guys try to agree. Get that mama on board and Versace. Everybody can work this out if you guys just apologize. Then lastly, we see Tommy in the studio with Spice. <laughs> Mona and her cronies again. They didn't got together and decided that they gonna... I guess Spice wants to work with Tommy. Okay, now Spice, from what I understand, is a bona fide, legitimate 
um, Jamaican artist, okay? So she would be the one that's stepping out on the limb and tying herself to Tommy, especially with Tommy's erratic behavior and the fact that she drinks a lot, okay? So at first, Spice is saying that she don't think it'll be a problem until she gets to talking to Tommy and Tommy tells her how you know she and Carly Red, you know, that's Spice's friend. And uh Tommy's like, Yeah, I ain't got I ain't got no 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 uh no love for her, you know. She was fucking around with showing up scrap. His name is coming up so much. I'm telling you, he is gonna be in some sort of storyline with Tommy. We got our good eye on you, Mona bitch. You ain't pulling one on us. We know how this shit work now. But whatever, Spice does agree that Carly Red wasn't right for doing that. Then Spice starts out of the blue talking about some problems that she got with her brother. She irritated with them at the time. And Tommy get to crying. And she's like, what be wrong with the girl? <laughs> That's my fucked up Jamaican accent. <laughs> um, and I know it ain't right. You ain't got to tell me. So anyway, Tommy tells her that about her family problems. And how she's upset with her mother and her sister. And they family... It's so fucked up, you know, you never know if they're going to be getting along one day or the other. And, you know, Spice is listening to all this. Again, Tommy is a little bit tipsy, so then Spice is a little concerned, like, hmm, maybe it is something I need to consider if she's going to be drunk all the time and I'm going to be working with her. Y'all know we got these frost facts. So Rashida, she feels inspired, even though D-Lo get on her fucking nerves. She is excited about this workout deal that he got her. So, you know, unbeknownst to him, she's working out extra hard, you know, working on her fitness. Shout out to Fergie. She is working with her trainer, and she has Carly Red there with her, okay, for comedic relief. You know Carly ain't working out. So after she finishes her little workout, she sits down with Carly Red and she's telling her how shit has been so weird lately, you know, because D-Lo is the pappy. And Carly Red is like, what? He is? You gonna tell the biggest mouth bone carrier for the Love and Hip Hop Atlanta franchise that D-Lo is the daddy, but then you gonna tell us that you ain't gonna tell her nothing else, no details. Fuck, what, else, what other details is it? What positions they used to, to conceive the damn baby? Girl, it ain't nothing else to say. You already told it, all right? So if you was trying to keep that secret, honey, you, you told the wrong damn person there. So Carly Red was just like, oh my God. Carly suggests to her that maybe she should start seeing other people. I mean, that trainer was a, was a looker. Rashida says that she's not ready for that. But you see where this is going. Later on, you know, Rashida's at work. Her store pressed. She got a mama there, Mama Charlene, and D-Lo's daughter. What's her name? Casey? I think that's her name. And um, <clears throat> in walks the extremely buff and not too bad looking trainer. And Rashida's just like, what are you doing here? He said that Carly said that you needed some help down here. And she was just like, see, that messy ass Carly. I said, girl, she gonna have you guys married off in the gossip in a minute. Child, you told the very wrong person. I'm trying to tell you. But anyway, she said, I'm not even gonna pay no attention to Carly Red. It is not about to happen. But um, hey, he's here. Might as well use him for what I need. I mean, because... <laughs> You know, she was telling Carly Red that she usually would call D-Lo for shit like that, but she don't feel comfortable asking him to help her anymore, okay? So, this is where the trainer walks in, steps in. Before he gets to work, he introduces himself to uh, Mama Charlene. Honey, Charlene looked like she wanted him for herself. <laughs> Casey introduces herself as D-Lo's daughter, okay? D-Lo being Rashida's husband. You left out the part that he fucked some bitch on the side and got a baby. But that's neither here nor there, huh? I guess she was trying to keep it positive, right? She... She got a problem with the trainer being there. And I mean, most pe people would. I'm sure she still has her dad's best interests at heart. She don't want to see the family torn apart anymore. So she got to keep her good eye on the trainer and Rashida. So she just like, the corny nigga got to go. But the mama's just like, I don't really see the problem with it. I mean, he seems nice enough. Fuck, D-Lo been out there running the streets, carrying the hell on all around Atlanta. Why can't you just have a little good time with this trainer? But, you know, Casey ain't seeing it that way. Rashida's just trying to explain to them, you know, that she's trying to handle this the best way that she can. What do I always tell you guys, even though this is probably not the best advice in this circumstance, but the best way to get over one thing is to get under another one. <laughs> All right, and what is probably the happiest little storyline um, in Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? I have never been this happy for anybody on this show. I don't think in a... I, I just can't even remember. I think it's because Jessica Dime has really come. We've seen that girl evolve 
from the first season. I don't even remember. When did she first come? Was it season three? I think it was either season two or season three. We've seen her really, really change. She's pregnant, remember? She's about to get married. She's going to her first ultrasound doctor's visit with Dr. Jackie. Okay, that is the OBGYN to the reality stars for sure. And she's telling us that, you know, her man Sean can't be there because Sean is trying to secure the bag by getting onto an NBA team. So he's traveling and he's working out with the teams and all of that trying to get on. So she's there by herself. So Jackie was like, do you have any other support? And she was like, mm, nobody other than Carly Red. I said, well, girl, you ain't got no support. <laughs> I guess Carly is her friend. <clears throat> I wish this bitch would quit talking on the side of my fucking car. Maybe if I start talking really loud, she'll walk away. She's on the phone. Just go somewhere. Anyway, Dr. Jackie says, so nobody else. And she says, well, you know, me and my mom, we don't really have a good relationship. I really wish that she could be here for me um, with all of this. But as of now, no, it's, it ain't really going to happen with my mama. Okay. So Dr. Jackie was like, you know, encourages her that she's going to need somebody throughout this journey. But let's get to the business. She lays down. They do the ultrasound. This is her first time seeing the baby on the screen, which is always a touching and a wonderful and a amazing moment. That is when you are reminded that you are a woman, that you are able to create another human being. I mean, the depth of that. You go through a whole bunch of these changes when you're pregnant. But that very moment when you realize that there is another living human being inside of you. I know some people don't call that baby a human being at that time, but you know what I mean. Okay, it is touching. So, you know, Jessica was just like, oh, oh my God. Like the whole time she was just so amazed. And then when they let let the baby, um, let her hear the baby's heartbeat. And when you hear that racing, it always reminds me of somebody that is riding a skateboard down a sidewalk. And when the, when the wheels hit the cracks in the sidewalk, it makes that I guess you have to be from a city where it had the sidewalks because they ain't fucking got no sidewalks barely here in Atlanta. But um, yeah, it was touching. I'm so happy for Jessica Dime. So later on, she's planning her wedding. She says that she and um, Sean are getting married. They're going to get married next year, NBA All-Star Weekend. That way she knows that he will be free. They're going to be getting married out in Paris and she's going to be picking out the invitations. She's a little bummed again because she doesn't have any support other than and um, Carly Red. Carly Red does show up for her. So that's nice. But still, it's not the same as Sean. Well, surprise, surprise, who should walk in but her man, okay? He was like, look, I done missed enough, especially since I missed the ultrasound. And and, and uh, Carly Red was like, what? Ultrasound? And she was like, he was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did I spill the beans? Yes, you did. And again, probably to the worst person who can't keep secrets on the fucking show, okay? But uh, Jessica Dime, you know, she tells her, yeah, she is pregnant, but she hasn't told anybody i said you have told everybody carly's all excited talking to her stomach yo this is auntie crackhead carly red jessica's just so happy and laughing you know she was like does your mom know and jessica's like no you know my mom is still mad at me over that shit that i said about her on the reunion she hasn't talked to her since then and um carly tells her you know what it is not time to just be petty and be holding grudges and everything okay that's your mom you about to have a baby you really should fix that and sean agrees okay this is a time where everybody should be coming together it's a new baby coming there's always a new beginning when a new baby comes and Carly says that she wishes that she would have made bigger steps to repair the relationship with her and her father her father is not even um, healthy now and could possibly be dying she only has a little bit time left if that is the case so she's trying to just let Jessica know try to fix that because I guess Carly's in that place where hindsight is 2020. And then lastly, you guys, we see Stevie J. He's hanging with his family. You know, he got his boys there, D-Lo and, and, and Young Jock. His daughters, his sons, you know, they're all there. There are some women there, you know, that can be considered eye candy. Even Jock and, you know, Stevie J, they look at them, you know, admire them. D-Lo says with his stupid ass, you know, I'm not going to pay no attention to nobody but my wife. I said, nigga, shut up stupid ass. And speaking of D-Lo's wife, Stevie J asked him, well, how did it go? Well, I told Rashida and she was highly upset. 
<laughs> understatement, I would think. But you know, D-Lo said he loved his girl. He loved his family. He trying to get them back together. And Stevie J was like, well, tell him. He was like, well, I do. I tell him every time I see him. <laughs> she ain't listening. I wouldn't be listening at this point either. The whole time D-Lo on the screen, I'd just be looking at it like this. Anyway, Mimi and her girl shows up. I have no idea why Stevie J has invited us here. I mean, are you getting married? Are you having another kid? You can never tell. I am just here for Stevie J's public spectacle. So once he gets everybody there, you know, and they have a little small talk, you know, try to make everybody comfortable and whatnot, Stevie J lets them know why he's called them all there, okay? He is going to New York the next day. He's going to be meeting with his lawyer. And considering how shit goes, he might be going to jail for a few months. Four to be exact. And everybody is shocked. Well, damn, tomorrow? Stevie J explains to us that he's been having these child support issues because of, what was it, the, the daughter Savannah, is that her name? And Stevie J's Stevie Jr., their mother is the one that had this child support case from back when he was with Bad Boy and everything. He was making all this big-ass money, and now he's not making that money. However, you guys explained to me that bill never goes away. Even if the mother decides that she doesn't want the case anymore, does it go away? I mean, in this case, it seems like the mama ain't trying to make the case go away. But I'm asking in general. If you, as the mother, say, okay, that's all right. He don't have the money. We going through this every few months. Okay, just drop the whole thing. The kids are grown and everything. Or is it a situation where you, the mother can't even stop it anymore, that this is a train that continues to go? But the way he was making it seem was that their mom is like, nigga, fuck you, pay me. Which is too bad, okay? Because he's got his family and they're all broke up over the fact that their daddy might be going to jail. You know, they all crying and everything. He's trying to calm them down, okay? It's just going to be four months, even though I couldn't imagine being in jail four months. I can't imagine being in jail four days. Four hours would be rough for me. I'm not a jail girl. I'm too cute. Mimi tells us, I knew that Stevie J was still dealing with issues with his child support, but I did not know that he was facing jail time. Eva is going to be devastated. Four months to an eight-year-old is like a lifetime. So, you know, they're having this touching moment and all of that. And then, you know, Stevie J again has to introduce the fool of fucking niggatry. He sit down with Mimi and he tells her that he wants her to run his management of enchilada elevator, enchirito escalator. Elevator, ensenada, enchirito, escalator. <laughs> I gave y'all that one extra. I'm just thinking to myself, like, when has it been proven that Mimi is any type of good manager? This is so stupid. But anyway, you know, Mimi, I will keep her where you need her to be while you're away. Meaning I ain't gonna do shit for four months and the bitch gonna sit over there on ice. But I'm just sitting there thinking like, nigga, you need to be more concerned about your life and not be concerned about these no talent having ass people that's on your roster anyway. I mean, fuck, he's got the just Brit girl who does have some talent, but she ain't even signed to him. So what you fucking worried about 2.0 for her? And speaking of Just Brit, she shows up, you know, she and Stevie J get into some sort of confrontation. We got Keely there with her. And Keely, remember, wants to be her project manager. Mimi is telling them, though, you know, that Stevie wants me to handle you while he's away. Just Brit ain't really feeling it. Keely, surprisingly, the, because she was so bout about it last week, is really quiet while she's sitting there. You know, Stevie J got his good eye on her and... He already trying, you know, hey, I might add her to the to the roster as well. What the fuck you gonna add her to? You ain't got shit, Stevie J, with this label. They ain't just on some bullshit. You know it. So later on, you know, Mimi says, Stevie has been in New York, and for Eva's sake, I hope that he doesn't go to jail. In the meantime, Mimi is going to have this meeting with his artist, you know, try to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So first she has 2.0 and Erica to show up, okay, and she's trying to break it to them before everybody else get there. So Mimi tells 2.0 that um, Stevie J wants her to manage her while he is away he possibly might have to go to jail 2.0 says hey that sounds like a good idea i mean mimi has always had my back and fuck he didn't even tell me he was going to jail so okay why not mimi's come up with this bright idea that she's gonna have a showcase y'all know how mona loves to showcase the non-talent and um she's gonna have all of stevie j's artists perform so that would be 2.0 
Okay, possibly Erica, I guess, because why the fuck is Erica even around? And um, just Brit. Well, you know, they have a problem with just Brit. Again, not sure why Erica has a problem. Why any of them have a problem with just Brit? You have created a beef with this girl for absolutely no reason. She hasn't done anything to any of you guys. But then we got to keep it entertaining for y'all, right? Erica says she's sick of just Brit. And Mimi is trying to keep it all level. And then next thing we know, we see just Brit and Keely walk up, okay? And just Brit already got the look on on her face like she's she's ready so once everybody is seated Mimi says she's gonna work with Keely to get this showcase going and she wants all the girls to be able to work together I want the girls to stop fighting and focus on their music what music just me is the only one why are we going through all of this you guys again Keely She's not the girl that she was last week. And if we probably would have met this Keely first, then I might have liked the girl. Okay? She's all business. You know, she's just trying to explain to him how this is all going to work out. But you know, Erica ain't listening. She and Just Brit immediately bump heads. And Just Brit was like, you guys came into my session while I was rehearsing and was just talking reckless. Just talking about me when I ain't did shit to you. Talking about my shoes and everything. And Erica was really trying too hard. I was just like, okay. I mean, I understand that Erica has this reputation of a just jump and off you know and being crazy and all of that but i'm looking at this and it's like girl you legitimately have no reason to be acting like this so that's what that's exactly what you're doing acting she says something smart to just brit and just brit tells her in spanish bitch go take care of your kid erica goes crazy after that okay that made her mad bitch i take care of my kids you don't know me you don't know my life don't be up here talking shit to me okay don't poke the bear and bring it out of hibernation okay so she starts screaming and pounding on the table and um i'm just like like sitting there looking like Erica really is none of this is necessary slowly but surely security starts to come in she stands up as if she's gonna do something but of course you know security is not going to let her so they start hustling her off hustling her back and she's all looking at them like don't touch me don't fucking touch me security is looking at her like girl you is about this big we can snap you in two if we want to she was just like don't be touching me I'm the fucking reason why you got a job bitch don't forget why you here I said oh Mona, Mona bitch, come on over here because I think we got to have a conversation with uh, Miss, um, <laughs> she obviously forgot who runs shit around here. I'm having some issues with YouTube and my uploading of videos right now, so everything is off schedule this week. I'm sorry. It's kind of out of my control right now. Anyway, it'll be up as soon as we can. Um, make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right. All right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.